So let us study basics of electronics and the history and evolution of electronics. Okay. So we know what is a branch electronics. We know that electronics means study of flow of electrons in electric circuit. And the brand electronics engineering, that means the branch of engineering which deals with current conduction through vacuum or gas or semiconductor is known as electronics. Okay. Electronics means it's the study flow of electrons in an electrical circuit. And electron, the branch electronics is a science that deals with the study of flow of control of electrons and the study of their behavior and effects in vacuum, gases and semiconductors. Okay. The flow of electrons and different behavior in the vacuum, gas or semiconductor load flow of electrons in a different behavior in a particular study on a branch of electronics. And we have already studied the electrical engineering. Electrical engineering means it deals with the current flow in conductors. And electrical components tend to be, uh, we know that the current flow through the conductors is larger. And it uses alternating current, AC voltage is only used in it. If it is single phase, it is 230 volt, if it is 3 phase, 415 volt. And we know that electronics is, which deals with the current flow in semiconductors. So there is a difference in the conductors, within the conductors, um, it's the electrical engineering means the current flow is through the conductors. And if it is electronics engineering, the current flow is through semiconductors. So most electronic components are very small and require small direct current. That is only up to 3 to 12 volt DC current is used in an electronic circuit. But if it is an electrical circuit, the voltage range is high, so the current flow is higher. And now we are going to study something. Before that, what are the importance of electronics? Mainly the applications are rectification uh, and amplification, generation, conversion of light into electricity and conversion of electricity into light. These are the main applications coming under the uh, electronics engineering. So main importance of electronics is the conversion of AC into DC is, uh, is coming under electronics engineering. That means we can convert AC voltage into DC by using rectifier. So the rectification is the main important portion in an electronics engineering. And the next function is amplification. Amplification means the process of raising the strength of a weak signal is known as amplification. And next one is controlling of signal. And Generation. Next one is generation. Electronic devices can convert DC power into AC power of any frequency using oscillators. So uh, we know that we have to study the oscillators, rectifiers, and transistors, something, uh, some electronic elements. So oscillators are used for generating AC waveforms. And conversion of light into electricity. We have already studied, studied that photoelectricity. The conversion of light into electricity is known as photoelectricity. And conversion of electricity into light is used in television, radars, everything. So, these are the important uh, functions of electronic equipment. That means rectification, amplification, generation, conversion of light into electricity and electricity into light. Then, We, we already told that in the, our, in, in the branch of electronics, it deals with a semiconductor. So we are going to study about semiconductors. So semiconductor is a substance which has resistivity in between conductors and insulators. Okay. You know that conductors have low resistivity uh, and semiconductor has the resistance in between insulator and conductor. So... The main properties of semiconductors are resistivity is less than insulator but more than conductor, main property. And the semiconductor have negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Negative temperature coefficient means 
resistance of semiconductor decreases with increase in temperature. So temperature increase you are in resistance decrease you are in for a semiconductor. If it is conductor, then that is positive temperature coefficient device. That means if, uh, if temperature increases, resistance also increases. So when a suitable metallic impurity is added into a semiconductor, its conducting property can change. Now we have impurity added in the plus two doping. That means or impurity semiconductor add it and the conductivity increase and but okay. So we are going to study the energy band diagram in solids. And number uh, purely semiconductors na question particular semiconductors no anon in karya there will be covalent bonds. In semiconductors, the bonds are formed by sharing valence electrons. That is the outermost electrons or the outermost electrons in uh, neighboring atom might share in share in the uh, valence band in a fill in the number covalent bond. Such a creation of bonds are known as covalent bonds. So, in the formation of covalent bonds, each atom contributes equal number of number of valence electrons. Outermost shell in the valence electrons in the share in and the contributed electrons are shared by the atoms engaged in the formation of the bond. Okay, so now we are going to come. So, diagram Okay, here you can see this is silicon atom. This is semiconductor silicon in which uh, the first orbit it has the atomic number is 14 and the first orbit has two electrons and the second orbit number 2n square which is the electron distribution so here there will be eight electrons and the outermost shell will have remaining four electrons so number um, for filling and shell for the orbit is filling at a stable state like that it needs eight electrons so eight electrons in a you will get it in the four electrons say will outermost shell so to become stable it will try to uh, get another four electrons from the adjacent solid atoms. That means it makes a covalent board between uh, four neighboring silicon atoms. So now we are going to study the energy band diagram. That means the first uh, orbit, second orbit, and third orbit will have different energy levels. Now we are going in nucleus or orbit electrons in or force of attraction on this. So there will be some energy level for each uh, orbit electrons. Okay. So let first consider the first orbit. Sorry. First consider the first orbit electrons. There will be two electrons. And the neighboring silicon atom also have uh, one uh, first orbit two electrons. Okay. So, in a crystalline solid, there will be numerous silicon atoms will be present there. But, the first orbit atom will have the same force of attraction between the uh, atomic nucleus and the first orbit. We have one silicon atom in the first orbit electron, the force of attraction is the neighboring atom in the first orbit electron. So, almost the same energy level. Or the first orbit electrons in a direction. Then let's consider the second orbit. Second orbit. Okay. So second orbit electrons in a there will be one energy level. That is the force of attraction between second orbit and is different from the first orbit. So the energy level is also different. So the neighboring silicon atoms also have this almost similar energy level of for the second orbit. And I thought that the millions of silicon atoms will have second orbit electrons on the or field second orbit on the other the electrons in all that almost a similar energy level. I think in a third orbit to consider the outermost valence shell and the third orbit in the outermost shell will have electron in nucleus in my force of attraction on the so 
they they also have a particular energy level which is different from first and second orbit so in a crystalline structure all the silicon atoms outermost shell electrons will have almost similar energy level so we can consider the energy level of first orbit as a band of energy and the second um, orbit as second band of energy and the third band third band of energy for the outermost shell that is representation of energy band like this you can see here field band the first band i to kanikana appo nammal silicon na thana example i to eduka i'll explain so silicon atom nu varna nammal parnu if it is a silicon um there will be three orbit first orbit will have two electrons second orbit will have eight electrons and third orbit will have four electrons that is a semiconductor so when atom bond together to form a solid the orbit of an electron is influenced not only by the charges on its own atom but by nucleus and electrons of every atom in the solid so that we know that there are millions of electrons belonging to first orbit atom in the solid so each of them has different energy therefore there are millions of first orbit electrons so they closely spaced energy levels differing very slightly in energy form a cluster or band so we can represent the first band of energy like this that is field band and also uh, an additional uh, here you can see the next band here it is not see uh, already seen we know that in a first orbit will uh, in a silicon atom there will be three orbits so we are representing the second orbit that is field band second second orbit electrons will have a band of energy level that is second band of energy okay and the third band is known as valence band okay an additional band is called conduction band it is shown above the valence band you can see this is the conduction band which is above valence band valence band will, uh, will be have four electrons for each um each outermost shell and that will have a, a band of energy level that is represented by valence band all all the three lower bands including valence band are shown completely filled അല്ലേ നമ്മുടെ ഈ മൂന്ന് ബാൻഡ് കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി കിൽഡ് ആണ് കാരണം കോവാലൻ ബോണ്ടിലാണ് ഉള്ളത് കൊണ്ട് ബാലൻസ് ബാൻഡിലും എയ്റ്റ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ഫിൽഡ് ആയിരിക്കും നോ എ ബാൻഡ് ഇസ് ഫിൽഡ് മീൻസ് ഓൾ ദ പെർമിസിബിൾ എനർജി ലെവൽസ് ഇൻ ദ ബാൻഡ് ആർ ഒക്യൂപ്പായ് അല്ലേ ഫുൾ ഒരു ബാൻഡിൽ പെർമിസിബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള എല്ലാ എനർജി ലെവലും ഒക്യൂപ്പായിഡ് ബൈ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് എന്നാണ് അതിന്റെ മീനിങ് ആൻഡ് അൻ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഇൻ എ കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി ഫിൽഡ് ബാൻഡ് കൻ നോട്ട് കോൺട്രിബ്യൂട്ട് ടു ഇലക്ട്രിക് കറണ്ട് യൂഷ്വൽ കണ്ടീഷൻ യൂഷ്വൽ അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയറിക് കണ്ടീഷനിൽ ഒരു ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് നോർമൽ ടെമ്പറേച്ചറിൽ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ഒരിക്കലും ഒരു അതായത് ഫീൽഡ് ബാൻഡിലുള്ള ഇലക്ട്രോൺ സ്റ്റേബിൾ കണ്ടീഷനിൽ ഇരിക്കുന്ന ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഒരു ഫ്ലോ ഓഫ് കറണ്ട് കോൺട്രിബ്യൂട്ട് ചെയ്യില്ല അതായത് ഫ്ലോ ഓഫ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് അവിടെ പോസിബിൾ അല്ല ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഫീൽഡ് ആൻഡ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് എ ഫോഴ്സ് ഓഫ് അട്രാക്ഷൻ വിത്ത് ന്യൂക്ലിയസ് സോ അതൊരു സ്റ്റേബിൾ സ്റ്റേറ്റിലാണ് അത് വെച്ച് നമുക്കൊരു കറണ്ട് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല ഒരു ഫ്ലോ ഓഫ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺ പോസിബിൾ അല്ല സോ ദ കണ്ടക്ഷൻ ബാൻഡ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് കണ്ടക്ഷൻ ബാൻഡ് റെപ്രസെന്റ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ലാർജർ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഓഫ് പെർമിസിബിൾ എനർജി ലെവൽ ബാലൻസ് ബാൻഡിനെ കഴിഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അടുത്ത് വരുന്ന ഒരു ബാൻഡ് ഓഫ് പെർമിസിബിൾ എനർജി ലെവൽ ആണ് ഈ കണ്ടക്ഷൻ ബാൻഡ് ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ റെപ്രസെന്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് സോ ദർ ഇസ് എൻ എനർജി ഗ്യാപ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദീസ് ടു ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബാലൻസ് ബാൻഡിനും ഈ കണ്ടക്ഷൻ ബാൻഡിനും ഇടയ്ക്ക് ഒരു എനർജി ഗ്യാപ്പ് ഉണ്ട് വി കോൾ ഇറ്റ് ആസ് ഫോർബിഡൻ എനർജി ഗ്യാപ്പ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് റെപ്രസെന്റ് ബൈ ഇ ജി ഓക്കെ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ബാലൻസ് ബാൻഡ് ആൻഡ് കണ്ടക്ഷൻ ബാൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ക്യാൻ ബി ലിഫ്റ്റഡ് ഫ്രം ഒരു ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ക്യാൻ ബി ലിഫ്റ്റഡ് ഫ്രം ദ ബാലൻസ് ബാൻഡ് ടു ദ കണ്ടക്ഷൻ ബാൻഡ് ബൈ ആഡിങ് സം എനർജി ടു ദ സോളിഡ് ഇഫ് യു ആർ ആഡിങ് സം എനർജി ടു ദ സോളിഡ് വി ക്യാൻ ലിഫ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഓർ വൺ ഓർ മോർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഫ്രം ദ ബാലൻസ് ബാൻഡ് ടു കണ്ടക്ഷൻ ബാൻഡ് 
An electron can be lifted from balance band to conduction band by adding some energy to the solid. So this energy must be that if we lift the conduction band, we have to add an energy gap. That is uh, different for different atoms. So it should uh, it should be more than the energy gap Eg. So this gap is called forbidden energy gap and for silicon it is 1.1 electron volt and for germanium it is 0.7 electron volt. Okay. In case of semiconductors forbidden gap is very small. So at uh, 0 Kelvin the conduction band is empty and at the balance band is completely filled. Uh, okay. And when small amount of energy is supplied to applied, then the electrons can easily jump to forbidden energy gap and to the conduction band. So the cherrier energy could the energy supply the gain at the balance band electrons in the conduction band load the lift and but semiconductors in the case. Okay. So the orbit in the conduction band are very large. So, we have nucleus and force of attraction. We have to do this. The first nucleus is first orbit, second orbit, third orbit. This is the level of the conduction band. So, distance from the conduction band to the nucleus is very large. So, the orbit in the conduction band is very large. So, an electron in the conduction band experiences almost negligible nuclear attraction. So it does not belong to any particular atom. If the conduction band is the electron, the force of attraction to the nucleus is negligible. So we can say that it is free from the nucleus of attraction. So it does not belong to any particular atom. So it does not belong to any particular atom. But it moves randomly throughout the solid. It can move throughout the solid solid structure. So therefore an electron in the conduction band are called free electrons. Nucleus to my force of attraction bond illa to the one that is free electrons in the will come. Okay. So when we consider the energy band diagram of the conductor you can see there will be no forbidden energy gap. In conductors there is no forbidden energy gap. The valence band and the conduction band are overlapped. So the electrons from the valence band freely enter into the conduction band due to overlapping of bands. Therefore, very low potential difference can be caused. Continuous flow of current. That is why conductors can produce flow of current. For the conductor, free electrons are all the one done. Free electrons are the valence band and conduction band overlap. Conducting state load test and electron already have the free electrons on the flow of current possible. But in insulators, in an insulator the forbidden energy gap is very large almost 3 electron volt. So more than 3 electron volt on now. So no electron is available for conduction. Large amount of energy is needed to move electron from valence band to conduction band in insulators. Okay, so this is the electronic structure. I am going to add the concept of two. If it is a semiconductor or any crystalline structure, first orbit will have two, then eight, then the field condition is eighteen. Okay, so this is the energy band in. So that there are discrete energy level in the case of isolated atom. First band, second band, third band. Again, we have the isolated band of solids represented here. Now we are going to study different types of semiconductors. Okay. So semiconductors can be classified as intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductors are further classified into N type and the P type semiconductor. Okay. So first we let us see what is intrinsic semiconductor. Okay, now silicon atomic structure can silicon. So a semiconductor in an extremely pure form is known as intrinsic semiconductor. 
ഓക്കെ ഏറ്റവും പ്യുവർ ഫോമിലുള്ള സെമി കണ്ടക്ടേഴ്സിനെയാണ് ഇൻട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ആൻ ഇൻട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ ഹാസ് ഓൺലി ഫോർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ഇൻ ദ ഔട്ടർ മോസ്റ്റ് ഓർബിറ്റ് ഓഫ് ആറ്റം നമുക്കറിയാം യു കൻ സി ഹിയർ ഫോർ സിലിക്കൺ ആറ്റം ദർ വിൽ ബി ഫോർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ഇൻ ദ ഔട്ടർ മോസ്റ്റ് ഷെൽ ബാലൻസ് ഓക്കെ ടു ഫിൽ ദ ബാലൻസ് ഷെൽ ഈച്ച് ആറ്റം റിക്കർ ഫോർ മോർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് അല്ലെ എയ്റ്റ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ആയാലാണ് അത് സ്റ്റേബിൾ ആവുന്നത് സോ ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് വി നീഡ് മോർ ഫോർ മോർ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ദിസ് ഇസ് ഡൺ ബൈ ഷെയറിംഗ് വൺ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഫ്രം ഈച്ച് ഓഫ് ദ ഫോർ നൈബറിംഗ് ആറ്റം യു കൻ സി വൺ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ വിച്ച് ഇസ് ഷെയർഡ് വിത്ത് അനദർ നൈബറിംഗ് ഔട്ടർ മോസ്റ്റ് ഷെയർ ആറ്റംസ് ഓട്ടർ സിലിക്കൺ ആറ്റം സോ ദ ആറ്റംസ് അലൈൻ ദം സെൽസ് ഇൻ എ യൂണിഫോം three dimensional pattern so that each atom is surrounded by four atoms adayathu oru silicon atomtinte outermost shell illulla four electrons totta neighboring four silicon atom aayittu share cheyunu appo adoru adinu totta adjustment indu aayittu oru crystalline structure form cheyum so such a pattern is called crystal a covalent bond this bond sharing of electron is known as covalent bond and which consists of two electrons one from each adjacent atom both the electrons are shared by two atoms alle two atoms two silicon atoms in uh, these electrons are shared and at absolute zero and at absolute zero temperature the valence electrons are tightly bound to the parent atom the covalent bonds are absolute zero temperature la strong bond aayittu ne keep cheyyum there will not be no free electron so the semiconductors therefore behaves as perfect insulator at absolute zero at the room temperature itself absolute zero la mari korchu the temperature increase cheyidu room temperature kanichithra yuvaangi there will be some covalent bond is broken so as room temperature may be sufficient for a valence electron to move away from the influence of its nucleus so some of the valence band electrons will be free from the sharing of covalent bond and that is at the atmospheric temperature le thane chela covalent bonds break cheyne korchu electrons free avu okay so when an electron breaks here you can see here when an electron go outside of the valence band and that is your crystalline covalent bond in break cheyidu porthu poi nikka so when an electron breaks a covalent bond and moves away a vacancy here you can see a vacancy is created that is called hole hole annanu nammal adine parayu free electrons and holes are always generated in pairs okay namukku ariyam oru electron covalent bond inu break cheyidu povumbo avade undaana vacancy annu nammal hole nu parayu adhaayathu ഒരു ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അതിന് പെയർ ആയിട്ട് ഒരു ഹോളും പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യും സോ ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ആൻഡ് ഹോൾസ് ആർ ഓൾവേസ് ജനറേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ പെയർസ് ദർ ഫോർ ദ കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ആൻഡ് ഹോൾസ് വിൽ ഓൾവേസ് ബി ഈക്വൽ ഇൻ ആൻ ഇൻട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ നമ്മൾ ഇൻട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടറിന്റെ കേസിലാണ് പറയുന്നത് കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോണും ഹോളും ഈക്വൽ ആയിരിക്കും സോ ദിസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ജനറേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഹോൾ പെയർ ഇസ് റെഫർ ടു ആസ് തെർമൽ ജനറേഷൻ അതായത് അറ്റ് റൂം ടെമ്പറേച്ചറിൽ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ അതായത് ജനറേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺസിനെയാണ് തെർമൽ ജനറേഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഓക്കെ സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ എനർജി ബാൻഡ് ഡയഗ്രാം ഓഫ് എ ഇൻട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ യു കൻ സി ദ ഫേമി ലെവൽ ഇസ് ഇൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ബാലൻസ് ബാൻഡ് ആൻഡ് കണ്ടക്ഷൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് എക്സ്ട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ സോ പ്രാക്ടിക്കലി all the semiconductor devices are made up of uh, made of the semiconductor material okay so in which certain specified types of impurities have been added and the process of deliberately adding impurities to a semiconductor material is called doping so when a, when we add an impurity to pure semiconductor to increase the charge carriers then it becomes extrinsic semiconductor so depending upon the type of impurity added extrinsic semiconductors are classified into two that are n type semiconductor and p type semiconductor so in extrinsic semiconductor without breaking the covalent bond we can increase the charge carriers okay 
So the classifications are N type and P type semiconductor. The first one is N type semiconductor. So when a small amount of pentavalent impurity is added to a pure semiconductor, it is known as N type semiconductor. Now then, the number of pentavalent impurity that means the outermost shell will have five electrons. That is pentavalent impurity. For example, phosphorus, arsenic. Which is uh, which is added to silicon atom. Uh, that phosphorus has five valence electrons. Arsenic also. So four of this form covalent bond with the four neighboring silicon atom. And the fifth electron is very loosely bound to its nucleus. So that becomes free. That is, five uh, electrons outermost of the shell over there. After that, we will select the impurity atom. That is known as pentavalent impurity. Outermost shell will have five electrons. But we know that semiconductors will have only four electrons in the outermost shell. So, that is four electrons. So, that is share and covalent bond. So, the rest of the electron is free. So, when we add an impurity, there will be numerous of pentavalent atoms. So, these pentavalent, each of these pentavalent atom produce three electrons. Excess free electrons. So a very little energy is uh, is needed or required to free itself from the attractive force of its nucleus. That is, the fifth electron will have loosely bounded to its nucleus, so we can make it free from the force of attraction from uh, in the room temperature itself. So at the room temperature itself, all such electrons become free electrons. So that is each impurity atom donates one electron, and this type of impurity is called donor impurity. Okay, because it is donating electron. And I know, our one pentavalent outermost shell will five electrons fill up. One impurity, I know, semiconductor will be added in that thing. That one electron will free it to donate it again. So we call it as donor impurity, and the donated electrons are called excess electrons. And there will also some electron hole pairs generated because of breaking of covalent bond. So, uh, namakariyam already in an intrinsic semiconductor, or at room temperature itself, some of the covalent bonds will broken, so an electron hole pair will be generated. So, due to atmosphere thermal generation, there will be some free electrons, and also due to adding impurity, there will be number of excess electrons. So the number of thermally generated electron hole pair is very small as compared to number of free electrons due to impurity. As the free electrons increases, their combination with holes also increases. So, now we are going to do thermal generation. Then, a hole produce is made. These holes are made of positive charge, electrons are made of negative charge. So, the electron hole pair combination is made of chance. So the net concentration, any time electron hole pair combination samboji varinyalam, there will be excess electrons because due to impurity. So uh, the net concentration of electrons is more than that of the holes. Alright. So the atmospheric temperature lana thermal generation ne karna electrons and holes will produce another. But uh, impurity, pentavalent impurity adde idhu ne holes produce yada or excess electrons are already free electrons side under. So, if you have an electron hole pair combination, then you have the number of electrons in the holes. So, it becomes a negative type semiconductor. So, electrons are negative type. So, negative charges. So, we can call it as negative type semiconductor. Current flow through the crystal is by free electrons in the n-type semiconductor. And the electrons uh, will act as a majority carriers and holes are minority carriers in n-type semiconductor. Okay. Next one is p-type semiconductor. So, we have n-type semiconductor. We have pentavalent impurity. That means there will be five electrons in the outermost shell. So, there will be excess electrons. So, uh, totally the net concentration is Electrons is more so uh, it is negatively charged type of semiconductor so we call it as N type semiconductor. Next one is P type semiconductor. If you add a trivalent impurity, that is the outermost shell, 
മൂന്ന് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ഉള്ള എന്താണ് നമ്മൾ സെലക്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇമ്പ്യൂരിറ്റി ആയിട്ട് അതിനെയാണ് നമ്മൾ ട്രൈവാലന്റ് ഇമ്പ്യൂരിറ്റി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ട്രൈവാലന്റ് ഇമ്പ്യൂരിറ്റി സോ വെൻ വി ആഡ് എ ട്രൈവാലന്റ് ഇമ്പ്യൂരിറ്റി ടു ദ ഇൻട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ ദ റിസൾട്ട് ഇസ് പി ടൈപ്പ് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ കൺസിഡർ എ സ്മോൾ എമൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് ബോറോൺ ആഡ് ടു എ സിലിക്കൺ ക്രിസ്റ്റൽ ബോറോണേഴ്സ് Boronus an atom which has three valence electrons. So these electrons form covalent bond with the three neighboring silicon atoms. That is, we have a silicon atom to add it. Here, this is an type. We have an arsenic add it. The arsenic is already four electrons and also an extra electron here that becomes free electron. But here you can see it is a impurity added is boron. Boron have only three electrons. outermost electron so it will uh, combine with the neighboring here it is germanium so it uh, it will generate covalent bond with neighboring germanium atom three germanium atoms so the fourth germanium atom will not get an electron from the boron because it has only three electrons so these electrons form covalent bond with the three neighboring atom and there is a deficiency of electron here you can see there is a deficiency of electron around the boron atom then an electron from the adjacent covalent bond jumps to fill the vacancy now we are at the room temperature itself sometimes there will be some electrons or adjacent neighboring germanium atom will contribute one electron to this boron atom okay so the vacancy will be filled by adjacent electrons or free electrons okay. and the bond along the and it will form a covalent bond along with the boron atom so boron becomes negative ion boron which is accepting an electron so it becomes negative ion here arsenic is donating one electron so arsenic become positive ion here boron become negative ion because it accept some electron from the outside so boron accepts one electron from the crystal therefore this type of impurity is called acceptor impurity okay so trivalent impurities are acceptor impurity pentavalent impurities are donor impurities so p type semiconductor has holes as majority carriers here you, uh, you can see already impurity is generating holes and also an electron hole pair combination is produced due to thermal generation ഇൻട്രൻസിക് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടറിലെ ഓൾറെഡി നമുക്കറിയാം അറ്റ്മോസ്ഫിയറിക് ടെമ്പറേച്ചറിൽ സം ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് വിൽ ബിക്കം ഫ്രീ ബട്ട് ദി ഫ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ വിൽ റീകംബൈൻ വിത്ത് ദ ഹോൾസ് സോ ദ ഇംപ്യൂരിറ്റി ഇസ് ഓൾസോ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസിംഗ് ഹോൾസ് സോ ദ നെറ്റ് കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഹോൾ ഇസ് മോർ ദാൻ കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് സോ വി കോൾ ഇറ്റ് ആസ് ഹോൾസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ പോസിറ്റീവ്ലി ചാർജഡ് ആണ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺസ് ആണ് നെഗറ്റീവ്ലി ചാർജ് അപ്പോൾ ഹോൾസിന്റെ കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ആണ് കൂടുതലെങ്കിൽ വി ക്യാൻ കോൾ ഇറ്റ് ആസ് പി ടൈപ്പ് സെമി കണ്ടക്ടർ സോ here holes are the majority carriers and electrons are the minority carriers okay now let us see the history of uh, evolution of electronics first the basics of the panel mainly or the first generation and uh, equipment the parana the vacuum tube and then after the invention of vacuum tube and the next century the another invention is transistor so this trans invention of transistor will completely replace the, the vacuum tubes then the another generation is integrated circuit so we can go through how it is reached the the first in 1883 in the 18th century thomas alva edison discovered that electrons will flow from one metal conductor to another through vacuum that is known as edison effect so in 18th century uh, Thomas Alva Edison discovered this Edison effect. Then, in 1904, John Fleming applied Edison effect in inventing two element electron tube called vacuum tube. So, vacuum tube is invented by Fleming, John Fleming in 19th century. So, in 1906, following this, Lady Forrest developed a three element tube called vacuum triode. That first, we generate this. vacuum diode the next uh, invention is vacuum triode this was a real beginning of electronics then in 1927 uh, 
Marconi invented radio, which was the primary form of education and entertainment. Okay. Then in 1947, the transistor was invented by John Bardeen, Walter Bratton, and William Shockley in the Bell Laboratories. So this invention revolutionized the electronics industry due to its features such as lightweight, low cost, less power, reliability, etc., which reduced the size of electronic devices. Vacuum tube, no, because for example, a big equipment, a glass tube, a cat. अब वो अन्य और वो सारी चीज़ चलें वैक्यूम ट्यूब से यूज़ करें ना ना जैसे ना हमारा और वो और वो डिवाइस हम ना कि वेरी मतलब ना तो वो फुल रूम का वो रहने दे दिले वो अत्यंत बिगर साइज़ से लायर नो हमारे लाज़ कंप्यूटर्स वेरी अंडर है फर्स्ट जेनरेशन कंप्यूटर्स अंडर है सो आफ्टर द � when Bell Laboratories invented thyristor, also called silicon control rectifier. This transistor was invented by thyristor. Then in 1958, Jack Kilby, an engineer of Texas, instruments demonstrated the first integrated circuit. Integrated circuit means a large number of electronic components could be fabricated together on a single chip. अरे नमले ही उसे ना डायोड्स अगर नंबर ऑफ डायोड्स और ट्रांसिस्टर्स नहीं रहे ना वो एक सिंगल चिप पे ले नमक का फैब्रिकेट है इधर और इसमें ये उसे हम बटन ना एक कंडीशनर आये तो बाला रे मिनियेचरस के साइज़ से लोटो कौन दोनों वैक्यूम ट्यूब्स ही ना ट्रांसिस्टर का साइज़ so, beginning of microelectronic revolution starts from here. So, in the year 2000, Jack Kilby won the Nobel Prize in Physics for miniaturized electronic circuit. So, as the technology advanced, number of components fabricated on a single chip also increased. And in the integrated circuit, we will add the number of components. कंपोनेंट्स ने कारण पिनीड लोअर इन्वेंशन लम नंबर ऑफ कंपोनेंट इन फैब्रिकेशन चीम वो इंक्रीस है इधर तोड़ने सो दिस एडवांसमेंट इन चिप फैब्रिकेशन इस अकॉर्डिंगली कॉल्ड एस स्मॉल स्केल इंटेग्रेशन मीडियम स्केल इंटेग्रेशन लार्ज स्केल इंटेग्रेशन वेरी लार्ज स्केल इंटेग्रेशन हाइट्रा so this resulted in new era of computers, mobile phones, microprocessors, etc. नमले ओरे ओरे नम साइज़ को अरने वरने वरने अन्नो अंडे रिक्यान ले नमले ये ओरे इंटेग्रेटेड सर्किट लोल ला ये ओरे एडवांस एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी से कारण है ना नमले ओरे ओरे नेम साइज़ हम अरे एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर बिट माइक्रोप्रोसेसर वो ले ला नम को पैट so, each generation produces smaller and smaller equipment which has number of components, numerous number of components which is fabricated on a single chip. And the 4-bit microprocessor was developed by Intel Corporation in 1971. So, you can see in 19th century, vacuum tube was the first generation of electronic equipment. In 1947, transistor that is the second generation electronic equipment. And in 1958, integrated circuit has been invented. And in 60s, 1960s, the IC has modified into small scale integration. Then medium scale, large scale, then very large scale and ultra large scale integration. That is the fifth generation. Okay. So these are the evolution of electronics. Okay. Thank you.